right, hello and welcome to another video from Flash Jazz Cat. And uh, it's back to Atari stuff in this video. We've got on the desk here an Atari XEGS motherboard, uh, which is sent in by uh, a customer who also had um, an Atari 1200XL motherboard uh, that I've fixed for him. And uh, you had to send that one back a second time. Uh, and this is the customer anyway who uh, wanted me to have a look at this XEGS board. So it wasn't such a massive uh, bind for him to send the 1200XL board back. So this one just doesn't boot. It boots to a uh, yellow screen. So we'll see what happens when we turn this machine on just after we've had a quick word from our sponsor, PCBWay. We were dealing with PCBs and I have to tell you it was a disgrace. They were terrible companies. But PCB Way are the best in the world. They do a tremendous job. Everybody knows it. We ordered some big, beautiful PCBs from PCB Way, and they were here within a matter of days. They came from China. China released it, and they came at tremendous speed. Prototyping, CNC machining, 3D printing. Nobody else has ever done anything like it. So I'll show you what happens when we turn this one on. We get uh, a green screen. You can't really see uh, very well. It's sometimes a pale green colour. I'll try it again. It's a bit easier to see when it's pale green. Nah, it's not working. It's very, very dark green. You can't really pick it up on the camera. Anyway, so uh, helpfully this board actually has the ROM uh, and the RAM uh, socketed and, and a couple of other chips got the Freddy socketed so we can see the RAM's uh, socketed here I whipped the RAM out just to see if that would uh, and swapped it over just to see if that would make any difference uh, it didn't and I tried a, a masked ROM uh, from a spare XEGS because the XEGS has got a bit of a a bit of a specially laid out uh, OS ROM it's got missile command on it and basic and everything all on the same chip that didn't make any difference now with the XEGS of course we can't just plug in the um, syscheck board which I normally would do because we don't have a parallel bus but really it was so easy to eliminate the RAM uh, in this case it's that's not really a big problem now with the XEGS uh, you often get problems with the MMU which I believe is a CMOS part and it's quite easily damaged uh, by uh, dodgy power supplies and that kind of thing uh, and the CPU the CPUs often go bad uh, but this is an NCR CPU and they are usually reasonably reliable now one thing I did notice with this board is that the the OS ROM obviously it's had a socket put in if we move up a little bit just so we can have a look at that so there's the the socket now it's not looking all that good uh, on the top side of the board it hasn't really been seated very well so um, I think I'll just uh, I've already fluxed up the bottom of this socket actually just before I turn the camera on I'm just going to go over this socket a little bit and just reflow it I think it's used um, the person who put the socket in has used uh, lead free solder which I can't stand um, but never mind what would be interesting to know of course is if this machine ever worked after this socket was put in because it hasn't been put in very well uh, and I asked the owner anyway um, if he'd fitted this socket and if, if he knew whether the machine had ever worked thereafter that would be very useful information indeed uh, but he doesn't know because he said he bought it uh, as part of a lot uh, and that this is how he received it and it's never worked so unfortunately we don't know if this um, socketing work is actually the culprit or not right I was just as I was going over the board here I can see a problem and I'll bet you'll be able to spot it as well this trace here is broken Now, what is that trace? It would be helpful to know where it goes. So I think we'll get the multimeter out and see if we can backtrace this uh, this trace, as it were. No pun intended. 
and find out what it is and whether it's critical um, just before I go ahead and fix it. Obviously I'm going to fix the trees but uh, I'd like to know what it is before I do so. So I'm going to put the meter in diode mode. So where are we here? Uh, so it's coming up here. So on, whereabouts is it? That's the third one. Uh, let's take this off. Have a better idea what we're looking at. Uh, it's that one there, it was underneath. So it's going to. Uh -huh. I wonder what you are. Aha, there it is. Right, found it. So it's this here. Where does it go after that? And it goes down here. It goes down here. Uh oh. And it arrives at pin 14 of Antic. So let's have a look at what pin 4 of Antic is. Pin 14 of Antic, rather. Oh, pin 14 of Antic is the read write signal. So that's not going to be good, is it? So I think we'll fix that trace. So I'm just scraping the um, ceramic insulation off this wire. We'll stick one end in here. <laughs> I think we need a bit of flux on there. It's totally bone dry. That's better. That's a lot nicer. Right, and then we lay that down here all the way to the other via at the other end. Uh, Lewis Rossman used to burn the insulation off this stuff with just with the iron and I've never ever been able to do that for some reason. It's the same iron as well. Right, I might just just get away with tilting and just balancing it on top of that uh, via. Flux. Right, and then we just need to put that on here. Nice swine. Oh, it's easier said than done, this. Right, that's on. Good enough for now. We'll dress it up later on, he said. So there's our little patch wire. Uh, where is it? There. Right, so that's got continuity now. So we've got read right going to the back of the board. I mean, it might just be for the cartridge port, so it might not make that much difference, actually. So that must have just been taking the, uh, the read write signal to the cartridge port. So unfortunately, that was not the fix. Well, you know what? I just don't trust that socket at all. After the experience I had with the 1200XL where removing the socket uh, revealed a, a mangled mess underneath, I think I'm going to take this one off as well. Right, let's get this OS-ROM socket off the board. And I think while I was working on that uh, socket removal, I can already see more damaged traces here, so there's no bloody wonder this computer doesn't work. I'll take this ROM out. I should have taken that out before, actually. Uh, that socket's almost ready to come out, but not quite. Just needs a bit of persuasion. It. Right, so with that socket out, we can have a proper look at what we're dealing with here. Not much to see on the top side of the board. There's not that many traces. There, there are a few. I will check them, of course, but most of the action is on the bottom. <coughs> while I was taking the socket off the board, I noticed this while I was using the desoldering gun. So there's another one gone. And there's another one gone. So, yeah, this is completely and utterly mangled by whoever put this socket on. Oh God, oh man! Oh God, oh man! Oh God, oh man! Oh God! 
Right, so I think I'll have to uh, continue this uh, in the morning because it's getting a little bit late now, but this is uh, certainly a bigger job than I had envisaged. Okay, we've got our trace repair job done here. Um, hopefully you can see that reasonably well. Very difficult to get this in focus this close, but anyway, uh, yes, I've chosen to uh, just use uh, very thin wire rather than magnet wire because I reckoned I could get it through the through the little gaps without any shorts Which I have so I'll show you what happens when I plug this in now oh, Keeps I'm constantly turning the thing on by accident when it's upside down anyway, so we'll turn it on So we clearly get a video signal, but now we get a black screen So this is encouraging in a way because it at least suggests that the operating system got as far as initializing the video hardware Because the screens now black is which is what it should be um, Previously it seemed to well obviously the operating system couldn't have worked at all so we just got completely uninitialized uh, GTI colors, etc. color registers, but it still doesn't boot. Unfortunately, I've just noticed another problem here. Can you spot what it is? Uh, I had a feeling that this was going to be the next uh, possible cause of issues, but I've just noticed there we've got a the remains of a trace. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm assuming this is a data line actually. Some chump has run the data lines right through the power supply. <laughs> Amateur hour. Uh, coming from this bank of resistors here and going to the RAM. And what's perhaps encouraging here, if I turn the machine on again with no RAM in it at all, I get exactly the same result. So that's encouraging because it looks like the damage to the traces around the RAM sockets is basically making the machine think it's got no RAM. Right, here we go, time to remove these RAM sockets. Right, let's see how easily these come off. All right, the uh, sockets are off and oh, we can see uh, what we're dealing with now. So this trace here is completely gone. Where did this one go? Uh, so that would have gone to here. So we're going to have to run a wire from down here, along here and to this via. That might be the only one. Ugh, absolute carnage. These look okay because they're all the bot all on the bottom of the board. That doesn't look too good. What have you done? That's supposed to go to the bottom. Okay, let's see if we can. Uh, well, we clean it up a little bit first and have a better idea of what we're looking at. At least it shouldn't take too long to fix this mess. But will it fix the machine? That's quite another matter entirely. Yeah, there we go. So that's a. That's another broken trace that I think was going to that bottom corner. Oh God! Why? Look, I, I don't. The thing is, I don't know what the intention of, was with this uh, machine. Did it have a problem? Did it work in the first place, or was it not working anyway? So he felt he had nothing to lose. But seriously, yeah, if this is the level of uh, competence you've got with uh, desoldering tools and such like just uh, just don't touch these machines send it to somebody who can fix it because you're not going to end up with a working machine if you do this to the motherboard as I keep telling people with uh, the retro computing hobby it can get expensive unless you can do all of your own repairs now this person could not do their own repairs so did they just do this work because the machine had bad RAM? Did they do this work because they wanted a more up-to-date XEGS operating system? I don't know. Anyway, let's, so I've got two to fix here. Right, so what I've had to do here, uh, I decided not to patch the uh, this pin here on this RAM chip, that one, or this one here. I decided not to patch it to the end of the trace with the solder mask scraped away. It was a bit too wobbly. 
So I've just used the old magnet wire and I've taken it straight to the destination there, R27. And there was another one which was actually to the bottom corner pin here. That one was easier. And in both cases what I've actually done is I've run the, uh, the wire down through the via and then I've pushed the socket in on top of it so it's anchored and the first thing I did when I put this top socket on was solder that pin and only that pin and test that I had continuity between there and there and then when I knew that was working I could solder the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the pins same thing with the bottom one the one that I'd patched I soldered that one first one and once I knew that had continuity put the socket in soldered everything else so that looks like a good repair so let's see if that has fixed the machine and if this has fixed the machine then i'm left with the question of why was any of this work attempted in the first place because if it had bad ram and the intention was to swap the ram how did he know there was bad ram because he can't have verified that the ram was bad after fitting the ram because he destroyed the sockets in the process i don't know i don't know what why this work was done on this machine all right let's switch her on uh, and it works excellent fantastic i'm more than surprised you can't really see that it's sort of murky composite video awful actually um but that's missile command that's come up there so i'm um, again i'm more than surprised this is really puzzling because I th what i thought would happen here was that i'd get all the damage that was done undo all the damage that was done to the board presumably well i thought in an attempt to fix some primary issue but there was no primary issue by the look of it unless we can get hold of the person who the current owner bought this machine from we'll never know what happened so that is good going i'm pleased about that because this is about the third or fourth repair on the trot that's been a win so that's good admittedly when you can see damage to the board it's much much it's a much easier proposition than having a board that's never had anything done to it these weren't particularly difficult the difficult part uh, with a machine like this is actually doing the repairs and doing them properly so i hope you enjoyed watching that just as much as i enjoyed doing it it was very satisfying to bring yet another machine back to life and if you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel. And thank you as always to my patrons and uh, any new patrons that have signed up since the last video. They'll be up on the screen as we speak. Uh, followed by uh, a list of all the other patrons as ever. And uh, your support is very, very greatly appreciated. As is the support of all the people who uh, view and like the videos and uh, add comments, etc. And uh, with that, I will bring this one to a close on a, on a happy note. And I will see you in the next video. So bye-bye for now.